Hey everyone, Storm Anderson here from Kumo Partners, and today I'm going to be covering a quick tip for Power Automate, which really might be the most valuable tip of Power Automate, and that is referencing the current flow run inside of your Power Automate flow. So this is incredibly valuable for things such as air handling, where you want to pass on that flow run specifically to a something, someone like a support specialist, uh, or even just associating to maybe a complex transformation process you're handling in flow, and you want to make sure to identify a document or something of that sort with the flow that it got processed from. So to do this, we're going to jump right in. I have an example flow here where I'm not doing anything too fancy. Uh, we have a manual trigger, no extra conditions around that. Uh, I'm just creating a simple array here just to reference inside of this uh, one, two, three, four, five, and feeding that to this apply to each. You can see we do a few things. So I always just use a compose reference to the current item. This is super handy just so that you can see what the value that the apply to each is looking at in a given iteration. Uh, and it just separates it out from actions where you're using that value and those actions could maybe fail. Sometimes they don't want to just show everything. Uh, it just makes it always easier to separate out for ease of reference. But really this apply to each is just creating a uh, SharePoint row for each row in the array. We're just creating a subsequent. Oops, we're just creating a subsequent test value one, two, three, four, five. So if I come to my SharePoint list here, you can see I have a few example rows, no additional columns, just besides the title. And what we're going to use is the business or rather data validation that SharePoint has on columns. Uh, it's the title column. You can see that we have this enforce unique values turned to yes. So we're going to use that to intentionally air the flow uh, and just be able to use that consistently. So I'll come back to the front of the SharePoint list. We can see our data and I'm just going to go ahead and run this flow as is. Put myself back over there. All right, so we can see it's running and we will see that this completes. Flow ran successfully. We can validate that of myself again. Uh, test value one through five, perfect. So if I run this flow just one more time, test manual, we're going to see now that kind of as designed, right, we're gonna see that this fails out and it's gonna air within the for each loop for each SharePoint item. So there's five items in the array. You can see we can go through each of them, one, two, three, four, five. So now we're gonna bring in the way to reference the Power Automate uh, flow run. So we're gonna to go to edit, and up above, we're just gonna create a compose just for ease of separating out. Again, I think it's always just a good practice for Power Automate development to kind of create variables or just references that'll help you better understand what's really happening along the flow. So in this compose, we're gonna not do dynamic content, we're gonna to go to expression, and so let me switch over to my little sample here. And so in short, I'm copying this formula here just because it takes away the spacing and everything. But the idea here is that we're pretty much taking these parameters from the workflow object we have access to and putting together this whole URL down to the run name here. And so if I copy this and put this into the expression and paste, you can see that that's this uh, concat function, just putting together all those things I showed you. We're gonna rename this compose action to just be flow run URL. And so now, uh, how do we implement the air handling? So we could put that after this create item where it was originally failing, but if we put it here, we're going to essentially send this email five different times uh, just because it's inside of the for each loop. So when this airs, it'll still run through all five items, but then the apply to each will still air regardless, summarizing the fact that one item at least aired in it. So let's just put the flow catch here at the end. We're gonna do new step, and then we're gonna do send email. I'm actually going to use a shared mailbox. Sometimes this is just better, but you could also just use the send email. It works the exact same way. Uh, it's just going to use the current user. Here, I'm going to use a dedicated mailbox for this, Kumo support, and I'm just going to send it right back to Kumo support. And so I'm going to put flow run failure as the subject. You could, of course, provide anything else here. 
And so for the body, since we need to bring in the link and create an actual link, uh, I always find this easier to just do from code view. Um, let's just clear this out. So if we want to put a big title, we can put these H3 tags is what they're called. And so if we want to do a link inside of this to make it really big, here, let me zoom in a little bit, we can do this. So we can go a href equal single quote, click on the flow run URL, close the single quote, close the a tag, and then link to flow run. And so we need to just make sure to close the a tag. So let me just put this on a separate line. So view the flow is going to be the big text. Put a little dash and then I'll say link to flow run. So just to reorganize, you can kind of see what it's doing here. Actually, let's just do quotes or uh, colon. So view the flow. This is the most important part. And then I just need to make sure for syntax sake that I close the h tag. So this is our email and this is all we need to send that flow run URL just based off of the fact that it's referencing this value here. And again, it's not easy to see within this concat, but I'll make sure to put this in the YouTube uh, for easy reference. So I'm going to go ahead and save. And before I run this, there's still one more thing we need to do. So if we look at how this is set up to run, this is going to run every time the apply to each is successful. And it's actually not going to run because it, once an action errors, the default method is for the subsequent actions to not run after that. So there's a simple little configuration we need to do, which is this property here, and it is the configure run after. And so you'll see that now send an email should run after the apply to each and it defaults to succeeded. We want to turn this off and put has failed and has timed out. We could do is skipped as well, but the thing is uh, when you're handling this in much more compli complicated you, uh, use cases, the skipped is going to be something you want to be careful of because if you're doing error handling above, it can skip items and then potentially re-trigger another uh, flow run. So you just want to make sure to watch out for that. So now that we have our air configuration set, let's run this one more time manually. All right, all the little pop-ups. And so now we can see that the flow, the apply to each did fail, but now this triggered as we intended. I'm going to go open that up uh, right here. And for this one, we can see view the flow, link to run. If I click that, you can see that this will now actually open up the flow and take us right to that successful run. In that case, though, it wasn't successful, but now you can see how we can capture that error and process that. Uh, to terminate the flow in a different way, because if you do look at this flow, it will say that it has succeeded, and sometimes that's not always what we actually want it to mean. So the final little bit here is that I would add a terminate action to do two different things. So after this has run, I want to terminate. And I want to either say it's failed, which is one way to then account for just very straightforward, it's a failed uh, use case. Or we could use canceled because sometimes I'll use canceled as just a visual cue looking through the history. But I think in this case, we could easily say that this failed. Uh, you could pass on the air or you could just leave all of this blank, but we're just going to say that uh, item could not be created. Go ahead and save. And then just to run that one more time, and run flow. You can see that the flow run failed and that is actually by design because the terminate is hitting how we want. So we still got our mail and this still has the link to the flow run. Now when this gets sent out, of course you need to make sure that whoever's getting this link actually has access to the flow, but they will be taken right to the flow run that was uh, handling that use case at the time. So I hope this is valuable, especially for any Power Automate uh, developers out there, makers, anything of that sort. So I hope you enjoy.